Hey guys, well, it's time for the weekend Q&A. Uh, I should have posted something last week or just quickly to say that I wasn't going to have a Q&A because I had some kind of a head thing going on. I don't know if it was a if it was a cold or allergies or what was going on, but for a couple days I had something happening upstairs here and uh, I was really nasally and you know me, I'm nasally as it is and so that it was just 10 times worse. So you guys didn't want to hear me, so I Anyways, I apologize for not giving you guys a heads up on that. But anyways, I just have a few that I wanted to go through here today. And we'll just jump right in and get started. So, uh, let's see. The first one. In a previous Q&A video, you talked about mulching. You said to stay away from bark. Why don't you view bark as a good covering? Okay, well, number one, I don't use bark <clears throat> because it takes so long to break down. And because it takes so long to break down... You get like earwigs and pill bugs and one, at least I have, where they just kind of get under there and it just, they just, it's a breeding place because the, it's just not breaking down and it's not moving around fast enough. In other words, it's not like, uh, it's not composting and so it just, it's almost acting like a blanket. And so I'm not saying that it's a bad covering. It can be a good covering, <clears throat> but it's not feeding the soil. See, the purpose that I use for covering is it, it, it's, it's more than just suppressing weeds and, 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 and cutting down on watering and all that. The, the biggest reason why I mulch with wood chips is because I like to feed the soil. And so it breaks down, and as the water, or if I water it, or the rain or whatever hits it, then uh, it's... It, it, all the nutrients are going into the soil. With bark, you're not getting that. It just doesn't break down. It just hangs around forever. That's why people use it around in, in landscaping. They use it around trees and stuff. And you see them in the big cities. And I think it looks pretty enough. I think it looks nice, especially, you know, if you use like the red cedar and stuff, it looks nice and it can be a good, it, but you're going to have to fertilize and, and whatnot. And that's not my purpose of mulching. My purpose of mulching is so that it's kind of, it's, it's just breaking down and feeding the soil. And so that's why I don't use it. So, uh, but it makes, it makes a good barrier and it looks fine. So I'm not dissing on bark. I just don't think it's, it's just, it's not beneficial to me. So that's why I don't use it. So, but, uh, if, 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 if it works for you, that's, it's great. So, uh, to add carbon to your compost, can't you use hay or straw? Uh, yeah, you can, and, and it, it would be a great addition to your compost. At least straw would be. Hay tends to a lot of times have seeds, and so you've got to be careful that you're not composting the seeds, and if it doesn't get hot enough, it doesn't destroy the seeds, and so the seeds will grow, and then you've got it growing in your compost and whatnot. Hay, I've used hay before. Hay works wonderfully, uh, but 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 then again, here here's the problem. It, I like to be self-sufficient. I like to use stuff that I have. And so if I have to buy hay or straw, then I'm not being self-sufficient. So then it's an added cost to me because I don't raise animals. Now, I am thinking about getting chickens again. I've had them before. But... Uh, it, I don't raise animals and so I don't have the hay and straw available but if you have it available especially if you have chickens or rabbits or horses whatever yeah absolutely go ahead and use it that stuff is that stuff's dynamite so yeah throw that in your compost so the next one what kind of tomato variety do you think might be good to try for someone who has never liked tomatoes I'm just not sure how to answer that question it, is that if you're saying it, a person doesn't like tomatoes, so what do you recommend they grow? Well, cucumbers. I, I mean, I, I, I don't understand the question. What, what kind of tomato variety do you think might be good for someone who has never liked tomatoes? If you don't like tomatoes, I just can't think of any varieties that don't taste like tomatoes. And so I just don't think there are going to be any varieties that... that a person would like and so if you like the word tomato you could try the tree tomato or try uh, tomatillos or something like that something that's kind of close to it uh, you could try the lychee tomato the lychee tomato is not even a tomato it's just it's called a lychee tomato it's not a lychee and it's not a tomato I don't, it's just a, but uh, it's kind of it's fairly cold hardy and it, it you grow them just like tomatoes but they're more of a of a bush and whatnot and they're small and round but you could try those but uh, I can't think of any tomatoes that don't taste like tomatoes. They all have a kind of a tomato taste, and so I'm not really sure. Uh, my favorite, my favorite tasting tomato, I have two of them, is, is the Opelka and the Brookhaven cherry. So, uh, yeah, those two, I love those, but they taste like tomatoes, especially the Brookhaven cherry. That's one that I bred out, and uh, it's that's a 
I mean, tastes really rich tomato. That's what that tastes like. Uh, let's see. I'm getting down to, to almost almost the end here. I've just got a couple more. Uh, okay, this is from building a mini greenhouse for raised beds. I'll put a link below if you haven't seen that video already. I went through and I and I added up all the all the people that mentioned this. They said, "Where do you get the four-way adapters?" So on the top of the bed, on the top of the greenhouse, uh, there are four-way adapters in the middle so that the that the cross pieces can come off and then the side pieces can go down. And and I guess what's happening is a lot of people are having problems finding the four ways. And so I've come up with a solution. What you want to do is you want to take two T's, okay, and you want to take these and uh, on the bottom part of the T, you want to drill in all the way through so it comes out here and do the same with this other one. And you want to take a bolt and bolt these two together. So you're basically coming up with a four-way. I'd say it's a six-way, but you've got two coming up here. And so you're basically not going to use one of these ends and so you're making a four-way is what you're doing so you're bolting these together like this right across here now you're gonna to have to have a long reach socket to get to the bolt but you just put a bolt in uh, here and it'll tighten it right up and then you've got your four-way you'll just have to adjust a little bit also on the length of the cross pieces because you're gonna to want to come off like an inch or so just cut your measurement back a little bit so uh, it's not a standard four-way. But anyways, that's how you can make your own four-way. And I think that'll just work perfectly. And then I've got one last one, and this is kind of not a nice one. <laughs> it says, uh, on the last video that I had, boom, right away, one of the very first comments, it was about finding carbon sources for your compost. And this was like the very second comment that I got. Uh, uh, this person says, you know nothing about compost, so you don't like cardboard. There's nothing wrong with cardboard. Do your research. You should find a huge box and bury yourself in it, you moron. <laughs> okay, you know, I, don't, I don't know why people love to use the word moron. I've had so many people call me a moron. I don't get it. Maybe I am a moron. Maybe I got this moron face or something. But there's nothing wrong. <laughs> you should find a huge box and bury yourself. <laughs> Uh, that is kind of funny, though. <laughs> it really is. Oh, I mean, it's not funny that somebody actually has that kind of demeanor that where they have that attitude and where they just have to call people names. But it doesn't bother me. It just, it just. I mean, it's like you know. I, I guess if people had kind of a fragile ego or a fragile whatever they call it, it would bother them. But I know what this person is just trying to say. He, he doesn't have any proof or information or links that he can give me about cord cardboard so i think he's probably using cardboard all the time and it works fine for him and he's still alive so i guess that's what it's saying but if you do your research the more i've done i, I i'm beginning to really realize that cardboard has a lot of a lot of uh, glues and stuff like that and they're just not they're not natural they're not they're nasty and actually somebody posted a really good uh comment on that video, and I'll put a link below. Posted a really good comment about uh, about the stuff that's in cardboard and whatnot. So you might want to go out to that video and take a look at that that comment that's out there. That's a pretty good explanation. But but like I say, I mean, we I I don't think a lot of us know. We just give our opinions and and that's what we go with. But anyway, <laughs> oh well. Anyway, so uh, so now summer's almost over, and I wanted to mention that. I'm going to be giving away uh, some seeds this winter. So keep watching for that. I'm going to have a seed giveaway, a contest. Uh, a lot of people have mentioned my lettuce and my peas. And I let them all go to seed and I saved the seeds from them. And so I'm going to be sharing those with people. And I got, I got a ton of seeds from both of them. So keep watching for that seed giveaway because... Uh, I, I, people were kind of impressed with how big, specifically, the the rogue diver. I don't know how to pronounce it. Rogue diver lettuce, and it, it got like I mean four feet tall. This thing was huge, and it resisted the hot weather, which it's not supposed to. So a lot of people didn't want to go out and buy the seeds 
you know, because you can find it online, no problem, but they didn't want, they wanted some of my seeds because I guess now they've genetically morphed into something that might be suitable for them and whatnot. And, and I, I've been saving the seeds for years and I guess maybe it's genetically has kind of adapted to growing big, I don't know. So, but anyways, I did, I saved a ton of the seeds and so I've got a lot of the seeds that I'm going to be giving away, so keep watching for that. So, Anyways, there's the Q&A for this week. I know it was really quick, and I didn't spout off too long, and I didn't ramble and go on too long. But anyways, all right, so we'll catch you guys all in the middle of the week. I got a new video coming up, so we'll catch you then. And if not, we'll catch you next weekend on the next Q&A. And don't forget to subscribe, and we'll catch you all later.